Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day or evening. Um, I just wanted to do a quick little tutorial on how to line a bodice. And the particular part that I wanted to show is how I actually pull the pattern pieces for lining the bodice. Now, um, this particular one has a center boning. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make um, this one half. I'm just doing the side seam to uh, side seam on this dress. And I'm still working on something over here on the other side. So I'm just gonna focus on this half of the bodice for right now. And what I'm using for my um, trace off paper, this is very expensive and fancy. I don't know if you could find it in your area. <laughs> this is paper towel. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to use for making patterns because you can crease it, you can press it, you can draw on it, uh, and it's relatively inexpensive. And what I do is I pull it apart into the plies. So don't use like What's the one that's not plied? There's one of them that's not plied. Um, this is just like, you know, shoot, I can't think of any paper towel names. You know, something cheap that you can pull apart. So what I'm going to start with is anything that's got a straight edge because this naturally already has a straight edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that. And the key to this is to make the pieces be exact. So don't put a seam allowance on it just yet because you want to figure out what your game plan is. Now, if you need to grab a couple of little pins to hold this in place, you can do that. And you see I just creased there and I'm going to come right up here and crease this in here. And maybe here. And then obviously where this curves, that's going to be a second. Let's go ahead and get this other piece mark. You can see that holds a really nice crease there for me to use. And I didn't think to go ahead and grab a pencil before I started. That would have been smart, but that's okay. Now I'm going to go ahead. Oh, actually this goes a little shorter. Now, you can make this be a couple pieces or no pieces or, you know, if you wanted to make this all be one piece, you could definitely do that. I'm going to follow the boning lines just because I think that's really pretty. Okay. So that one is actually going to be piece number one. So that piece is done. Okay. So then what I can do is pop these guys off. And then I'm just going to go around here and trim all the way into my lines. And part of the reason you don't want to put the seam allowance on this right now is just so you don't confuse yourself. Because um, it's really easy to get lost and forget what you put where. and. Um, also if you're lining with satin or if you're lining with stretch, they'll be different. So I feel like it's good to just be in the habit of doing it one way so that way your brain isn't having to remember multiple ways all the time. And that's just something I've learned that I need for me. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and grab, I'm going to still use my little piece here because there's still enough real estate there. Let's go ahead and lay this straight edge out here. And you can see I'm just butting it right up against the last piece. And obviously there's some wiggle room with this, but um, it's good to practice being as accurate as you can so that way when you're working with something difficult, it's not so complicated. Crease. Crease. Now, muslin is not super expensive. I know that a lot of people will pattern in muslin. I can pattern in muslin too. I just really like this because I put a lot of time and effort into the actual bodice. I don't want to spend more money on muslin. I know that sounds a little weird, but um, it's just another operating cost essentially and I think this is better for the overall price point for the bride and it's just less waste all the way around which I like and then honestly I will either save these if I really if it's something I really want to keep 
um, I'll trace it onto oak tag. But if it's not something I want to keep that I'm ever going to use again, oh, let me actually cut this on frame. Um, then I'll just clean with it because this is still a good paper towel. <laughs> so these will get balled up and cleaned with if I don't end up needing it for anything else. I do have some templates that are like this that I use. I've used over and over again because they were on dresses that I ended up needing. So usually I'll hang on to the pieces for a little bit so just to make sure. Yay! So fun to watch it get all filled in, isn't it? And then when I lay these out to cut them, that's when I'll add the seam allowance. And I double cut everything so that way I have both sides, but then I will make sure the double cut is doubled. So it's actually a fourfold. That way I can get enough pieces to double my lining up. Um, I like to do two bodices sewn together at the top edge. And yeah, I know that's not like totally necessary. I just think it looks and feels nice and that way there's not a raw edge. On the, whoops, <laughs> it's fine. I'm just a professional cameraman over here. Um, but that way it doesn't, you know, have a raw edge inside the dress or it doesn't have one on the outside. I just think that looks nice. Um, no shade if somebody likes to, if you like to just do the one side though, that's totally cool. Um, I just never know where to put the seam allowance then. Do you put the seam allowance facing the outside of the dress? And then on this one, it's sheer, so I feel like I would see that. So basically, I just want it to look nice from both sides. That's kind of more what I'm looking for. And then this way, I can kind of creep in here and crease. You see how, like, nice that is? It just, oh, it would help if I actually put it on the screen. <laughs> but that's my actual shape here now. Let me flip this over. So this is a lot less fiddly than it looks. The hard part about this right now is just that I'm trying to get it on a camera. And I'm not used to centering things for a camera yet, so that's that's my challenge. Let's see here. And then I actually will top stitch all these pieces inside. I think they look really nice, and then it helps keep the seam allowances tidy also. Yeah, she looks good. This is so hard. My head is so far away from the scissors. <laughs> if you ever want to make yourself feel like a terrible seamstress, try recording yourself doing any sewing activity. <laughs> it's very thumbsy, I'll tell you that. Whenever anybody asks how long something takes me and I record it, I'm like, gosh, is that really how long it takes? But then I have to remember that recording everything takes so much longer. And this isn't gone too long, it just definitely feels like it. So you can see how this is filling out really nicely. And then I'm going to kind of square this up a little better. I had a lot of tissue up here to, to work through. Let's trim this. But yeah, the nice part about peeling it back is that you also have a little bit of transparency to the paper, so you can actually see through it and, I don't know, it's not brittle like tracing paper. Okay, so now we're going to get into the actual cup, which is always a challenging part for people. <sighs> Let's see. I have this little random offcut that will work for the center, and then I have this other piece left. Okay. So, let me start tucking this bad boy. That actually is really freaking close. How cool. That's why I save all my scraps, because you just never know. Okay. And like I said, the key to this is to anchor one flat edge. So get one good edge in, so you're not just like constantly rotating and rotating. Get one good edge and then kind of work 
out from there. So this part is perfectly smooth. Now I can kind of creep along this one. And then I'm just looking to meet it back up to the other side of the paper towel. So there we go, that crease will get us there. I'm gonna cut that off now. Now you definitely can do this with math. I have done plenty of bodice lines where you measure everything and draft it out. And yeah, I do love doing that. That's super accurate and lovely. But this dress is not one that I work on a lot. So I'm not going to, I don't want to say I'm going to throw the pattern out, but I'm not necessarily going to save this one. Dresses I work on frequently, I'll definitely keep the pattern. So that way I'm not having to double over everything multiple times. But I might not see this pattern ever again. So now this one's going to be a little bit harder because the piece I have is giant. So let's trim this down to a little bit more of a workable size. Okay. So this time I'm going to keep this center apex seam. That's, I'm going to keep that flat in there first. This is a dress I had um, adjusted the, the princess seam here because it was way too round on her. So um, this is definitely not a manufacturer's cut anymore up here, so it's going to look odd. Now, if you need to push the cup back this way so you can see it better, do that. You know, kind of roll it outwards. Now, it might affect the shape you're getting, though, so just be mindful that you're really butting it up against the other pieces. And like so. But before you trace off the other side, pop it back down so it can read properly. Now, this makes sense why this is always the hardest part to sew on this shape, because you can see how everything's changing direction. Now, fabric will ease in much better than this paper towel, but that's why that's always like a trouble spot to sew, because you can really see how much more fabric there is here on this edge. Okay. So anytime there's something about a pattern that you don't understand whenever you make it you'll start seeing different angles it's really quite fun and then you can give yourself a little bit of grace when you're sewing it because you're like okay that part is a weird piece of the pattern now right here I'm coming up with a crease that's telling me that I'm gonna keep this curve but that I oops <laughs> seems just life you grab a pin and you get a needle instead that's telling me this is good, so I'm going to keep that, but I need to adjust this piece, the tip. So let's pull that out. Okay. Gorgeous. And then I'm going to fold that in. Okay, this piece is going to be squirrely looking, so let's take it out and see what it looks like. So he kind of crazy. Okay. So let's trim. And then like I said, I can still take this over to the iron and press this out because it's not, well, I mean, you can press paper, but this is going to just smooth right out if I want to iron it, which is really nice and handy. And then important part is to make sure to mark all your pieces and especially if you're using a double-sided fabric. Oh, there we go. See? You definitely need to mark where your pieces came from because they can fool you. I have been fooled many a time by my own pattern pieces because I'm like, oh yeah, that's how it goes. And then I'm like, oh, that was upside down. Okay. And then... I don't think I have a pencil handy. So I'm going to show you off to the side. So what I do when I'm making two pattern edges that meet up where they match, I'm going to put two dashes like this. So that way I can see that these two pieces go together. Now you can do twos and threes just like that. And that way when you separate it, you'll know that those two pieces go back together. Doop, little woodworking trick. 
And then that's pretty much it for pulling the pattern. Now, as far as what order you want to assemble it all in, that's going to be kind of personal preference. Um, I just wanted to highlight this portion of the process for now, because um, there's more than one way to skin a cat when it comes to the actual process for putting it together or installing it. This is my base for every style that I do. So you can use this for any type. Sew in, single layer, double layer, detachable. Um, you can make a multiple layer sandwich with this if you need to do um, sheer tool and then nude tool and then satin. Um, this will work for everything because it's a base template. So it's just nice and clean and true pattern, true measurements. And so there's all of our pieces all set to work with. And I can lay this out on my fabric now. And I, you know, I might still need to make some adjustments, but that was pretty quick. It's been 15 minutes. Not bad at all for rambling and trying to record yourself doing this. But let me scoot this over so you can really get a feel for the pieces. Okay. And then... Hang on to these. Let's put this down here. Scooch ya, ma'am. Okay. So this is the part where you don't want to mix anything up. Because these look wild. Like, would you have expected that that's what that looks like? <laughs> and there we go. If you haven't worked with patterns a lot, then this might be new to you. And if not, this is definitely not a new shape. But those are the pieces that are going to be for... This particular bodice and then I think on this one I want to do a 3 8 seam allowance because it's the the lining is actually that um, like IT wise kind of spongy so the seam allowances will be a little bit thick so I think what I want to do is top stitch them and I want a decent seam allowance so my foot doesn't roll on it and then top stitch everything nice and flat and then put my little uh, two layers together it might be a little thick but her wedding is in October and it might be cold ish now, it won't be cold. I was like, maybe, but no, this Arizona. We don't have a lot of cold. But either way, it'll look really nice and it will match the quality of this dress. So I think that'll be great. Alrighty, I'll post some pictures um, in our group if you want to see how this looks when it's all finished. Thank you guys so much. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments for me on this very basic method for pulling a pattern from your bodice to line a wedding dress.